मैं तो दिल्ली यार दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, international companies amongst rate defaulters. Fiji made products vying for U.S. shelves. And Rarawai Mill sets high sugar target. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. We can tonight reveal that some international companies are amongst those who have been defaulting rate payments, resulting in millions of dollars remaining uncollected. Local government minister Pramila Kumar says these companies who earn their money in Fiji are failing to comply with the rate laws, but the buck doesn't stop there. The no-nonsense minister says the laxity by some municipal council workers is aiding these big companies. Kumar adding in an effort to address the issue of defaulting their rates, the local government ministry has begun rate profiling. Kelly Vavala reports. By profiling rates, the ministry will be able to collect information for its investigation of illegal rentals and why rate payers are not up to date with their payments. In fact, international companies who owed rates to municipal council, there is no reason why they can't pay the rates. So there were two issues. One, the council staff, they were not proactive. They were not uh, really uh, making any effort to collect the rates. Kumar says the new system will allow them to better understand rate payers. Then we will know exactly the, the issues surrounding this particular household, um, why they're not able to pay. If they're putting out two flats on rent, why aren't they paying rates? The minister says if landlords are not compliant, the ministry will start collecting money from tenants. The local government act is very clear. It talks about atonement of lease which gives power to the ministry to collect rent directly from the tenants if the landlord has not paid the rates. Municipal councils are also working with employers of rate payers to get payments done. Nasunu has gone into uh, more detail where they know where you work so that we can uh, approach uh, the, 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 uh, the employer uh, with the help of the rate payer to see if deductions can be done at source. With many rate payers facing financial constraints due to the pandemic, the ministry has strategies to assist them with payments. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Following a second roundtable discussion with exporters and government representatives, U.S. Ambassador Joseph Sella says some aggressive discussions will begin tomorrow in the United States to push more Fijian-made products onto the shelves of American supermarkets. Apenisa Wangarindovo reports this is just one of many things expected to unfold from a series of talks the U.S. Embassy is hosting. With opportunities unfolding, the ambassador says the workshop allows local businesses to understand what sort of market they can tap into. This one got into uh, more of the nitty-gritty, so to speak, the very finite details of uh, the regulatory framework, the product opportunities, the de you know the supply and demand, and uh, and then how we can um, help producers here scale up. Um, in terms of uh, processes and protocols, best practices, so they can get their products to market. Seller says they see hunger in the United States for Fijian made and grown products, but exporters will need to know what the market demands are to be successful. Also key is to just establish themselves, the producers here, uh, as known quantities with the consumers or the wholesalers or the representatives in the United States. Prominent entrepreneur Anthony Akoy says the workshop was an eye-opener as he will now relook at how he runs his business. Well, what we've got to do is we have to uh, find, the, find what customers want and then develop the products to, to match rather than us try and grow products and then try and find the buyer. Uh, and I think this is the mistake that we, we personally have made in the past. The U.S. ambassador made an assurance he would create a bridge to improving bilateral relations in trade between the two countries. FBC News. The Rarawai Mill and Bar has set a high target for the cane crushing season, including a 20% improvement from the last production. With a lot being said about the industry facing difficulties due to COVID-19, farmers in the Fiji Sugar Corporation are both confident the outcome will be sweeter than usual. Philippe Nakaso, who was in Bar today for the first tipping. 
the Rarawai mill is expecting to produce 58,295 tons of sugar, which is an increase of 20% from last season. Uh, we expect this season to be a very good season. Um, I'm told and promised that uh, the crop is looking good, uh, healthy, and we expect more sugar out of the crop. The focus on the mechanization of harvesting is also continuing to ensure efficiency and reduce cost towards cane growers. 26 mechanical harvesters are expected to be in the Rarawai and Penang areas. Given the expertise uh, that we have managed this uh, industry over a decade, uh, we will have our locals that will fill in the gap and will we'll ensure that this, uh, this season, 2022, becomes a very good season. Farmers and lorry drivers are also optimistic of a good crushing period. We're planning to harvest it all this year. Uh, if the meal is going well, without any breakdown, or, we are willing to cut it all. I think season this year should be good. Eh? And I think meal will run good eh? so we can at least we can uh, make two trips per day. Staff of the Rarawai Mill have also been reminded of the coronavirus and to ensure all precautions are taken to avoid re-emergence. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Police are confident that they have collected enough intel to functionally disrupt drug operations in Fiji. Commissioner of Police Brigadier General Siti Venengilio says there has been an increase in the number of drug-related arrests in the recent months. Gilio adds that there has been concern regarding the increase in alleged possession of green drugs or marijuana and hard drugs such as cocaine and methamphetamine. He says that they continue to gather information that adds on to what the police force has gathered in the last three years and they are confident of disrupting this illegal trade in the country. We've set up uh, teams in all divisions now specifically that in coordinating all these activities. Uh, with a special uh, task force team that I have that, we are that is enabling us to make uh, significant strides in that area. Up ahead, high costs giving rise to informal settlements and rental car industry facing major challenge. Radio Fiji One, Nandomo Iviti. The high cost of housing has forced more people into an informal settlement where waste management and sanitation are major problems. Coordinator Isor Vakarewa of the Revitalization of Informal Settlements and Environment Program says their program has identified a number of informal settlements in need of better environmental management. Chosai Nunga with the details. Isoa Wakarewa says in their pilot project, they've identified 12 informal settlements within the Suba Nusori Corridor, where they will be improving waste management systems, sanitation and hygiene. These settlements that are very much uh, present uh, in urban centres are not part of the centralised sanitation facilities. Uh, and so, you know, some of these big infrastructure are not always fit for purpose. They run along the informal settlements, but unfortunately these settlements are not connected, therefore their waste is not treated, which puts a lot of pressure on the environments in these informal settlements. So and one of the key program areas that we've done extensive work uh, across the 14 uh, provinces in Fiji um, is um, in water, sanitation and hygiene, what we refer to as WASH. At the beginning of this year, RICE program started developing the community co-design plans and was halted in March due to the pandemic. However, the teams are all geared up to make up for time lost with these informal settlers. Together with the communities that are going to receive the intervention first, our teams will go in and work with the community to look at what that infrastructure will look like. Where will it go? What are the spaces that are available? How does it affect people? You know, How can they connect? Uh, to the system that we're going to establish as part of the project. Vakarewa says they've selected six informal settlements with urgent need for waste management before proceeding to six other areas. The settlements to be examined are Matata in Lami, Nauluvatu, Muanivatu, Wailea, Komave in Namua, and Wunimbua, which is next to Muanikoso. 
Chosayerenuga, FBC News. The Lambasa Airport will be temporarily closed for three weeks next month to allow runway upgrading and maintenance work to be carried out. Fiji Airport says the airport will be closed from July 13th to August 4th. This means that all Fiji Link and Northern Air flights to and from Lambasa during that time will be cancelled. Fiji Link says customers already booked on these routes can change their flights to depart from and arrive at Savu Savu instead. Fiji Link will increase frequency of flights into Savu Savu to cater for Lombasa customers. Northern Air Chief Executive Captain Rangesh Sin says they will be diverting all the Lombasa flights to the Savu Savu Airport to allow for the upgrade and maintenance work. They will maintain the same number of flights to Savu Savu. The Lombasa Airport was initially scheduled for closure in April, but this was affected due to the COVID-19 inter-island travel restrictions. Upgrading of the airport apron commenced last week and will continue until September. Rental car companies are in the country are struggling to survive the coronavirus pandemic's catastrophic blow to their business. The companies are not only dealing with the ripple effects caused by the virus, but are also facing challenges from illegal operations. Pranita Prakash reports. In order to stay in the business, the rental car companies have been forced to forego bonds on rented vehicles. Uh, just because of this COVID-19, plenty of people are being laid off and now they're making a good money, I mean, easy money on these vehicles. They're just giving them their private vehicles to your family member or somebody just to pay them at least something and then they just give it up. Mohammad Shafi claims illegal operation is also affecting their business. The operators like from... Uh, medium to small range they're giving without any bond and I, uh, bigger companies have been reduced the bond and few companies are going like if you hire for three days you get one day free and uh, smaller companies are going like half the price or more than about uh, 20 30 dollars a day i would say there probably has been an increase in that uh, activity um, however what i can tell you is that the lta's enforcement activity has not been scaled back uh, we are in the process at the moment and have been for the last uh, seven or eight weeks uh, with a joint operation with Fiji Police Force and that's been very, very successful. The Fiji Rental Car Association is calling on Fijians to assist their local businesses and to report illegal operations as the legitimate businesses are losing out. Pranitha Prakash, FBC News. Residents living in and around the Greater Lamy area will now be able to access Land Transport Authority services more conveniently. The new Lamy Express Centre was officially opened by the Transport Minister Fayaz Koya at Harbour Point this morning. Koya says while vehicle inspections will still be carried out at the old LTA office in Lamy, other services will now be provided through the new office. He highlighted that last month alone, over 900,000 transactions were carried out at the eight LTA offices around the country. Koya says the new Express Centre is a prime location for the businesses and the communities. Internal transport and logistics infrastructure and, and system are essential to support economic activity in Fiji including the tourism industry and other vital export industries. Hence, the role of the Ministry of Transport and LTA is critical in this time of, of post-COVID-19 economic recovery. The key focus for the Ministry and LTA will be the reduction of, of traffic congestion and reducing the burden on customers and better service delivery. And turning overseas, two more staff members of President Donald Trump's campaign, who were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, for his rally on Saturday, have tested positive for the coronavirus. On Saturday, hours before the rally, Trump's first since March, six members of the campaign's advanced staff had tested positive. And it's time for the day's business with Whitney. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight, small businesses facing bleak future. And in growing Fiji, Lambasta Town plans revealed. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.
Leading business concern is rising as more businesses close down due to the adverse impact of the current pandemic. Most of those affected are small and medium enterprises relying on the daily function of the market economy. The Fiji Chamber of Small and Medium Enterprises anticipates more of its members shutting down due to the pandemic. Venina Rakautonga has more. As Fiji continues to feel the effects of the pandemic, small businesses will be hit the hardest. You know, some days we do not sell uh, any, any products and, and some days uh, we sell very little. But uh, yeah, it, uh, people are holding back and not uh, buying. President Humphrey Chang of the Fiji Chamber of Small and Medium Enterprises says the issues facing small and medium businesses are inevitable. <clears throat> The number of uh, businesses that have closed down, according to the news, is only 60, but I think there's a lot more than that. And, uh, and if, if, uh, if there's no uh, uh, support coming from anywhere, in this case it's coming from the government, then more, more small uh, entrepreneurs will close down. President Sandeep Chohan of Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation says the webinar series they launched last week will bring great benefits to business owners. There weren't many people that you could go up to um, in terms of giving you that independent advice, you know. And, and this actually provides that opportunity for the MSMEs to, to pick up the phone or to dial in somewhere or to connect um, with a mentor and say, this is my difficulty, how would you advise us? Meanwhile, the Fiji Chamber of Small and Medium Enterprises plans to hold an annual general meeting next week to discuss the best way of helping its members. Venina Rakautonga. FPC News. The Nandi Chamber of Commerce and Industry has welcomed the further relaxation of COVID-19 restrictions by the government. President Do Dr. Ram Raju says this will bring back hope and confidence to the business sector and revitalize our industries. Dr. Raju highlighted the wide range of measures to be implemented is the right button for a new normal. He says the Care Fiji app is a significant step as more and more Fijians are using mobile phones. Dr. Raju urged all business houses to adopt adopt the COVID-19 safe protocols as outlined in the Care Fiji app. The Chamber has also welcomed the new curfew hours from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., saying they support this curfew until international borders are open and tourists coming back. At least 160 staff will start normal shift work for Outrigger Fiji Beach Resort as they work towards reopening on the 1st of next month and welcoming local residents. The reopening is vital for the resort as staffs will be able to work a few days. General Manager Darren Shaw says they are confident that coming next Wednesday they will be able to reopen for the local market as the resort has a great following. Currently the resort has a total of 520 staff out of which 420 have been receiving some pay ever since they had closed down. With Outrigger, we're a very fortunate position that uh, 20 years history, 20 years of uh, a great loyal local following, and when you're only sort of uh, close on two hour drive from Suva, I mean, why not take advantage of the great deals that are out there and you're supporting your local economy? We now join Sanifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money markets. Let's look at the latest from the foreign exchange markets. The US dollar was on the back foot today, while some risk sensitive currencies stood firm. Markets are clinging to the hope of an economic recovery from the pandemic despite rising infections in some parts of the world. U.S. home sales dropped to their lowest level in more than nine and a half years in May, strengthening expectation of a sharp contraction in the housing market this quarter following disruptions caused by the pandemic. The slump in existing home sales reflected closing of contracts signed in March and April when nearly the whole country was under lockdown. Meanwhile, the Aussie dollar picked up a boost yesterday when Reserve Bank of Australia Governor Philip Lowe said the currency's recent rise was not a problem and the impact of the pandemic would not be as bad as feared. Investors are now looking to the European Business Activity Survey due in the next few hours. From HFC Bank, Vinaka.
Turning to today's exchange rates as set this morning, once again we're seeing the Fiji dollar affected by the U.S. dollar and a reversal of yesterday. Today the Sangamoli rose against the Chinese one and the greenback, as well as all the other currencies we cover, but for two, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Looking at the commodities, the price of crude oil has risen above the significant $40 per barrel mark it was at when the pandemic started. Gold was up at $1,767 per ounce and silver dropped the few cents to close at 1780 sous an ounce. The Lambasa Town Council has identified a piece of land across the Lambasa River to relocate the municipal market and bus station as it looks to expand the town to cater for increased growth. Eleanor Turangai View reports the council is now doing all the paperwork to acquire the land and start the development work with the help of the Ministry of Lands. bigger market, a bigger bus station and a commercial area are all part of the Lambasa Municipal Council's plans to expand Lambasa town. So Lambasa seems to be a growing town. And that's something that we're very thankful because at one time people were sort of uh, you know, running away from Lambasa. But I think things are growing and uh, the plans uh, of the town council are now to expand the market, expand the bus stand, expand the commercial areas. Earlier this year, a feasibility study was conducted on three possible sites for the relocation of the market and bus station and the development of a commercial area. They've identified that piece of land that they desire and uh, they've also, also applied already to the Ministry of Land. So that is something that our officials will be looking at. The town council is also seeking to obtain the foreshore area around the existing market for some planned development works. We've asked, uh, asked officials to go through their normal due diligence the normal process that they have and then we will come back to them with a decision on the request that they have. The expansion plan is expected to address the traffic congestion problem in a town with a population of around 30,000. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thanks Whitney and good evening in sports tonight. Thumbs up for 11 sports the start and stallions to defend fair brother during skipper cup this and more coming up mula i'm miri i'm from lotoka and i love gold fm because they play all my classic hits gold fm only the classic hits Rugby, football and cricket is amongst the 11 sports now able to start their respective competitions. These sports are returning to play in line with pandemic protocol approved by the government and the Fiji National Sports Commission. Aquila Dama with the details. They are now accredited and can assist other sporting organizations who don't understand the process at the moment. Can those who have got the certification please share your process with those who are still struggling to get the certification. It is not an easy process and I would say like karate you can share with judo. You know, so people who are from different sports share with them and guide them through the process, they will need help. The government acknowledges the tireless efforts put in by sports administrators to hit the ground running. It just demonstrates your commitment and, uh, and the passion that you have for the sport that you actually manage and administer. And I hope that we can only you know, progress and make things better from here. There will be some random checks done by relevant authorities on sporting events just to make sure everything is in line with government's commitment to keep Fiji COVID free. A breach doesn't mean somebody's done something massively wrong. But if we suddenly see there's the potential of it, getting bigger, well, we'll have to get the Ministry of Health involved. Hey, everybody wants to make sure we stay COVID-free and that we're practicing safe sports. So, again, will we, yeah, everybody will be doing the spot checks. Along with rugby, football and cricket, AFL, bowling, cycling, yachting, gymnastics, karate, squash and tennis have been approved, meaning the weeks ahead are going to be more interesting on the sports scene than the quiet last few months. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. After being accredited today, the Fiji Rugby Union is ready to kick off its competition from the 25th of next month. FRU Chief Executive John O'Connor says the opening round of the Skipper Cup should not be missed 
speaki, speaking rather to Aquila Dama, Ocon explains why fans should mark the 25th of July on their calendars. All smiles for the Fiji Rugby Union after being accredited today, and they are also thankful for the 50% capacity at a venue. Uh, we also thank them for the, the allowing crowd, uh, although they are requirements to be followed and um, we are keen to make sure that we follow those. Defending Skipper Cup champion Suva will play Nandronga in the first round in a month's time. And what many don't know is the fair brother Sullivan Trophy will also be up for grabs in that match. So all the matches uh, will double up as a fair brother challenge. Whoever plays the, the fair brother holder in the home ground will also be challenging for the fair brother. While the FRU has ticked all the boxes, Rugby League will have to wait a little longer before they are certified to start their competitions. We are yet to receive a formal announcement by the uh, Fiji National Sports Commission. There were a few documents that we uh, had uh, relaunched uh, on Monday, yesterday, with the Sports Commission and uh, we're looking forward to accreditation uh, when it comes up. Natambi says they will make an announcement about their competitions on Thursday. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. Sports has long been regarded as a universal language that connects people regardless of ethnicity, religion or social status. So amid the current pandemic, the commencement of sporting activities is seen as a glimmer of hope for some form of return to normalcy. Today, members of Fasenoc and Onoc took time out to celebrate an important day on the sporting calendar, Olympic Day, with a virtual race organized by the International Olympic Committee. Caroline Itavi has more. Pacific Games Council President Vidya Lakhan has highlighted the role sports plays in people's lives. The important thing is, is recognizing what sports people individually and collectively, the role they play in trying to sort of unite the world, bring us all together using sports as a medium. Asinok has acknowledged the work done by Olympic sporting bodies both locally and abroad. Is, you know, today is about celebrating uh, and acknowledging the work that you all do in your little bubble. Fasenov President Makarita Lenoa says with sporting activities having been given a green light to resume, athletes can start to prepare for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan next year. It's now open for you to begin your training and the Olympics is a, over a year away, which means you have more time to prepare and from all of us, it's all the best for your training and preparation. Fiji Rugby Sevens captain Melin Darnalangi and Olympian amateur boxer Winston Hill was among the 22 other Olympic athletes from around the world who were part of the Olympic Day virtual race that was aired live on the Olympic Channel earlier today. Carlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Cricket Fiji will be the first sport to restart after being certified by government today. Cricket Fiji will host their T10 competition on Saturday and are ready to resume under the new normal. Chief Executive Alex Conrote says they are fortunate to meet all the requirements and begin competition with the assistance of their governing body. We were also very lucky that uh, our international body, the International Cricket Council, had sent us uh, a month ago uh, what cricket would look like uh, during COVID. Um, so changes in rules and uh, a few other uh, changes as well. Uh, and that was our guideline for our application to uh, the Fiji National Sports Commission. Phil Foden and Riyad Mahrez both scored twice as Manchester City thrust Burnley 5-0 in the Premier League this morning. Pep Guardiola's side are now 20 points behind the leaders Liverpool with eight league games remaining. Now to play of the day and we take a look at the try of the week from round two of Super Rugby out there Roa. The Blues keep the ball alive and pull off a masterful team try which puts Mark Tele in the corner right after a well-timed pass from Fijian Hoskins Sotutu. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in new media, find out if you're in need of a digital detox. This and more after the break. Hola, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. 
Gold FM, only the classic hits. The coronavirus pandemic has seen the use of digital technology hit the roof. Quick look at the weather, a weak trough of low pressure is expected to approach the group from the west and gradually affect the country from Thursday. A look at the weather map, in the west mostly hot and humid conditions, eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy most of the time once again today. And up north similar cloudy conditions prevailed. At sea, moderate to fresh east to southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. And turning to the tides, low tide at 2.17 tomorrow morning, with high tide at 8.26 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.37. Now for tomorrow's cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, mainly fine weather elsewhere, cool at night. And tomorrow's temperatures, it will remain in the high 20s. And our further outlook, we're looking further on to Thursday. Cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, will you or have you downloaded the Care Fiji app? I don't have a phone right now, but I have heard about the Care Fiji app and I do not know much about it. I think it is a good initiative by the government and yes, I would download and use the app. Yes, I would download the Care Fiji app. I think it's a, a very important uh, uh, tool that we need to help uh, keep track of our movements uh, to, and to help uh, minimize a second wave of uh, COVID-19 outbreak in Fiji. It's a must to download Fiji Care app, so I guess... It's a pretty good thing to download and install. At least you'll be in track with this COVID-19 global crisis. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, Nirvana icon Kurt Cobain's guitar featured on the legendary 1993 MTV Unplugged session, sold over the weekend for a record-breaking $6.1 million. More. Recapping the main stories for tonight, international companies amongst rate defaulters, BG made products vying for U.S. shelves, and Rarawai Mill sets high sugar target. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking... Are you in support of the new and relaxed COVID-19 restrictions that have been announced? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, this was taken in Korvuto Nandi by Sungvanua Kurui Saravi. And you can send us your newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it on our FBC News Facebook page and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, stay safe, stay warm and dry. Bye for now. I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.